so during the uh, the fifth week of our uh, the lecture sessions on uh, management of inventory systems uh, we are going to discuss the important topic called dynamic inventory problems under certainty as uh, we have already mentioned that uh, the inventory problems are essentially classified under four categories and one important category is dynamic inventory problem under certainty so so during this week uh, we are uh, going to discuss uh, the several important aspects uh, related to this problem particularly uh, uh, the specific topics uh, uh, lecture wise i want to tell you what are the specific topics we are going to discuss in detail uh, in the first lecture uh, we'll mention the general characteristics of the problem then two types of uh, inventory control systems they are referred to as a pure inventory control system and uh, they are <coughs> these systems are called q systems of inventory control and p systems of inventory control q stands for the quantity and p stands for uh, period so we'll explain it in detail these two types of uh, inventory control systems then uh, the next topic we are going to discuss that is determination of economic order quantity or eoq during uh, the second lecture uh, session uh, we will uh, uh, discuss the eoq and optimal total cost what is the relationship between eoq and optimal total cost then determination of economic production quantity particularly when it is a self supply case and uh, we'll cite several numerical examples in the third lecture session we will discuss a specific model called uh, eoq or economic order quantity with planned shortages there are situations where uh, you know the shortages uh, can be planned for certain uh, kinds of items so uh, this uh, particular order quantity model with plan shortages we are going to discuss and uh, there will be numerical examples and how to determine eoq with quantity discount this is also an important topic during a uh, fourth uh, lecture session we'll continue our discussion on uh, determination of eoq with price discount there are several issues one after another we'll take up all these issues and both analytical and graphical methods we'll discuss and uh, there will be obviously numerical examples during the last lecture session during this week we refer to determination of optimal order quantity under constraints and uh, optimal policy curve this particular concept we should be aware of and uh, we'll uh, take up several other numerical examples so this will be our coverage uh, during the fifth week now let us first uh, talk about uh, uh, certain uh, general characteristics of uh, this kind of uh, problem called a dynamic inventory problem under certainty and then uh, once the characteristics are known then uh, we will explain in detail uh, the working of two kinds of inventory control system the first one is the q systems of inventory control and uh, and the second one is the p system of inventory control then uh, we'll explain in detail how to determine the economic order quantity or eoq so during the first lecture session uh, this will be our coverage now let us first uh, talk about uh, the general characteristics of this type of problem called dynamic inventory problem under certainty so uh, several uh, points uh, we have listed so uh, let us first discuss all these points one after another now in this kind of inventory problems more than one order is possible we already we have defined 
that is why it is referred to as the dynamic inventory problem. The level of demand for the given item or the given inventory item is known over the period of time considered. Say it is one month, suppose the period. So, what is uh, you know the demand during one month period that is to be known. Similarly, suppose uh, the demand level of an item uh, uh, of an item for the next uh, 12 months or one year, this is uh, this demand level is known with certainty. So, that is our assumption at this point in time. Now, either the demand is expressed in total number of units say 1000 units or 10,000 units physical units or at some constant rate over time like uh, someone might say that the daily demand uh, the rate is uh, for a given inventory item maybe say just 1000 units or 2000 units. So, uh, the depending on the production rate, uh, so you specify this uh, uh, the rate like it could be on the hourly basis or daily basis or weekly basis whatever it is. So, uh, the total demand is not known, total demand level is not known, what is known is actually the demand rate and uh, what we will assume that when we say that the that the, it is a dynamic inventory problem under certainty, we will assume that this demand rate does not vary over time. So, this rate may vary over time periods, but variable demand rates are known with certainty like in certain cases like say you are given uh, uh, the next uh, 12 months the data on demand level and uh, you find that uh, month to month there is uh, there is a change in demand. But uh, this is uh, uh, the demand is known with certainty, but it is a variable demand in the sense that uh, uh, this uh, the month wise there will be month wise variation, but year wise uh, there will be uh, the no change in uh, in a month's demand. So, that sort of uh, situation or that kind of uh, say the demand level is also referred to as uh, the demand with uh, say certainty. Okay. So, as demand is known with certainty, there is generally no need to consider possibilities of overstock or understock. In the previous lecture sessions, we have uh, explained um, that uh, why there is uh, an overstock or there is an understock situation and, uh, and what we have mentioned that uh, uh, you know uh, the effectiveness of uh, any inventory control system or for that matter and that the quality of any inventory control system is just by uh, the amount of say the overstock as well as the amount of understock uh, that uh, you generate uh, with respect to uh, a given say inventory policy for an inventory item is it ok. So, here in this case as the demand is known with certainty there is no question of having understock or overstock multiple orders are possible, we need to consider order cost to reflect penalties with more than less orders. Now, now we are referring to uh, the what are the uh, kinds of uh, the relevant costs you need to consider while you formulate uh, this problem. So, as multiple orders are possible, obviously uh, you need to place an order and uh, while you place the order uh, for a given item uh, say outside supply case obviously you need to carry out certain activities and any activity you carry out there is a cost associated with it. So, you need to be uh, aware of all these activities uh, related to placement of an order. So, when you consider all the individual cost elements you can have an estimate of the ordering cost. So, that is the first type of uh, the cost you must consider. We need to consider a carrying or holding cost or inventory carrying or holding cost to reflect penalties resulting from keeping a high level of stock over a period rather than a lower level. That means, uh, if uh, for keeping the stock in good condition, so you need to take certain actions and any actions you take there is a cost associated with it. So, you need to be aware of all these actions, all these activities and uh, when you consider all these activities and corresponding cost elements, 
you can have an estimate of the so called inventory carrying or the holding cost okay so this point also we have uh, uh, we have discussed in the previous uh, lecture sessions while we formulate the problem we need to consider both ordering cost and inventory carrying cost and these two costs are opposing to each other that means uh, if the demand remains uh, constant and if you have more number of orders obviously you know uh, the ordering uh, uh, ordering amount per uh, order uh, will be less and uh, if uh, the per order uh, the ordering quantity remains less obviously the average inventory which you hold will come down and if the average inventory uh, uh, the decreases the inventory holding cost also will decrease and but similarly if uh, you place a less number of orders obviously the average inventory will be more uh, at any point in time uh, how much uh, the inventory you keep on an average and if the average inventory which you hold is more obviously the corresponding inventory inventory carrying cost will be more so that's why we say that these two costs are opposing to each other that is if the order cost is more carrying cost is less and vice versa for many materials used for construction fabrication or production purpose now we are citing examples that where uh, you may assume that uh, the demand uh, remains uh, constant or it is a problem uh, under certainty so for many materials used for construction fabrication or production purpose the demand is known with certainty for example inventories of construction materials say steel girder so the amount of steel girder that you uh, that you need uh, for constructing uh, a house so uh, that is known and uh, uh, with certainty and uh, and this uh, the amount you need to be maintained that means the inventory of this particular material you need to it needs to be maintained and their demand is known with certainty so there could be several examples of uh, the demand uh, the remaining uh, say the constant at a particular uh, during a particular time period for both q system and p systems of inventory control their parameters can be formulated with demand assumed to be known with certainty as uh, we have already mentioned that for any kind of inventory control systems so the two questions are raised the first one is uh, the when to order and the second one is how much to order and uh, as well as uh, queue system is concerned uh, the when to order uh, that is to be decided that means you really do not know in advance when to place the order but if you want to uh, uh, you want to decide or if you decide to place an order obviously at a particular point in time the order quantity uh, is known and remains constant so that is the q system whereas for the p system what we have that means at what point in time uh, you need to place the order that uh, the timing is known but the order quantity may vary is it okay so the problem is also referred to as that means this kind of problem dynamic inventory problem under certainty this is also referred to as an independent demand system so please uh, note uh, this particular uh, say uh, the point that is it is also referred to as in many textbooks in many uh, the case studies these are referred to these problems are referred to as independent demand systems and as the demand is known with certainty the models prescribed to determine the parameters of the inventory control systems under consideration are deterministic in nature so in this particular uh, uh, said so during this week in all these uh, uh, during uh, the lecture sessions we will refer to several kinds of numerical problems and uh, you will find that uh, uh, that uh, the demand uh, the level of uh, of a particular item considered Uh, doesn't vary over the time periods so in order to determine an optimal inventory policy data related to the following three parameters are needed so please uh, note this point first one is the demand levels or the demand rates as already we have mentioned 
relevant inventory related cost like in this case the ordering cost as well as the inventory carrying cost or inventory holding cost you need to consider and the third important uh, uh, say the aspect you need to consider that is the lead time okay before we formulate the problems the working and the parameters of the two pure inventory control systems as already i have pointed out uh, these p systems as well as the q system of inventory control they are referred to as the pure inventory control system and uh, either uh, in any inventory con or in any production uh, say the department or any work units related to a particular uh, so the inventory items either you come across uh, the q systems of inventory control or p systems of inventory control and in many instances you may also find a combination of p and q is it okay it's not exactly q or uh, it is uh, it is not exactly p but it's a combination of p and q in course of time we'll be referring to such uh, inventory control systems q systems of inventory control also known as the fixed order size systems f o s s please uh, uh, note this particular term that means this is referred to as the fixed order size systems sometimes this is also referred to as the continuous review system so uh, whenever you place an order the order uh, quantity or the order size doesn't change that's why it is referred to as the fixed order size systems whereas when you use the p systems of inventory control uh, uh, we 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 know that what is the order interval at what point in time you are supposed to place an order so that's why this is also referred to as the fixed order interval system f o i s so the both the systems we'll discuss uh, so the first uh, we'll refer to the working of fixed order size systems or f o s s continuous review system now this is uh, the working so we have explained the working of f o s s with a flow diagram so let me first uh, uh, in uh, clearly you know explain uh, this flow diagram so what are the activities involved like uh, the first you start with the stock available for the given inventory item so now if the demand occurs obviously from the stock the units will be withdrawn and this demand may occur at any point in time so you are ready with the stock for the given inventory item so the demand occurs means units withdrawn then what do you do that means uh, you just check what is uh, uh, the current the stock position that means you need to determine the stock position so what is the stock position the stock position is the on hand that means uh, what is physically available at that point in time plus the on order that means for the given item already you have placed an order and the order has not yet arrived okay so obviously it is pending but you need to consider that amount so that is referred to as the on order minus the back orders okay that means uh, what has happened that due to uh, some point in time the the customer has arrived uh, he or she is asking for that particular item but uh, there is no stock so obviously uh, you cannot uh, meet uh, his or her demand and uh, that's why you ask them to wait and they are waiting so this case is referred to as the back ordering case so as soon as uh, you uh, the stock position that means the back order quantity should be subtracted now you uh, check whether the stock position is less than or equals to reorder point or not if it is not then obviously the stock is available but if you find that the stock position is less than the reorder point that means it touches the reorder point as already i have pointed out there are two parameters of q systems of inventory control first one is order quantity and the second one is the reorder point so the stock position at any point in time okay when uh, the units are withdrawn you check with uh, the reorder point so if the stock position is less than or equals to the order point obviously what do you do you issue a replenishment order is it okay and obviously with the lapse of uh, this lead time uh, the stocks are received is it okay so this is the flow diagram 
Now, the certain important uh, points you please note, note down. First one is the what are the parameters of this particular system. First one is order quantity and the second one is the reorder point already have mentioned. It is also referred to as the continuous review system applicable mainly for now this is the important point. So, applicable mainly for direct direct material that means those are directly used for producing the product at the production stage and uh, that is the and this material is the part of the product. So, those, these, those materials are referred to as the direct uh, uh, the inventory item or the direct material or if it is an expensive item that means units purchased uh, price is very high and if it is considered to be an important item already we have referred to the classification of uh, the inventory items the classification schemes and we have uh, extensively discussed uh, the selective inventory management. Now, order quantity here in this case the order quantity remains fixed but the order interval is a variable. Okay. So, this is the working. Now, what is the working of a fixed order interval system? So, here also we have drawn this flow diagram. So, what you have first the stock available that is the starting point. The review period arrived the first question you ask that means, suppose uh, yearly just uh, once you place the order. There are many such items uh, mostly indirect uh, materials uh, you use uh, uh, the periodic review systems or FOIS. So, there uh, what you do that means, say uh, uh, every year just once you place an order uh, and uh, meeting the requirements of uh, the entire year. So, the review period arrived say so, you need to place an order on 1st April of uh, any year. So, the your the financial year or the fiscal year starts on 1st of April. So, uh, so that the review period you just check whether it has arrived or not. If it is no that means, uh, you go back to the stock available you do not need to take any action. Now, during this time what might happen that the demand may occur and if the stock is greater than the demand there is absolutely no problem that means, the stock uh, is uh, assured, but supposing the stock is less than the demand then obviously, you are uh, uh, you, you are unable to fulfill the demand and uh, depending on the responses of the customers there could be two situation first one is uh, the back ordering and uh, alternatively you can have also the loss sales. So, now, if the review period arrived suppose it is yes then determine the stock position. So, again stock position is on hand plus on order minus the back orders then compute order quantity. Now, you how do you compute the order quantity? Now, in this particular system there is one parameter called the maximum stock or the maximum inventory. So, later on uh, we will take up this case and we will tell you how to determine uh, uh, the value of this particular parameter called the maximum stock. So, the maximum stock is one of the parameters this value will this value will be known. So, how do you determine the order quantity maximum stock minus the stock position is it ok. So, obviously, the stock position varies from one period to another and so also the order quantity and then once the order quantity is known you issue replenishment order and uh, then when the lead time is over the stock is received. Okay. So, as per the order quantity. Now, what are the important points to be noted? First one is here the parameters are the order interval and the maximum stock as already I have pointed out. It is also referred to as the periodic review system applicable mainly for indirect, inexpensive and unimportant or less important items. Okay. We have already explained what do you mean by the importance of an item from which perspective you define uh, the importance of an inventory item. And here the order interval is fixed that is why we are saying that uh, you just check whether the review period arrived or not that means, it is known in advance, but the order quantity is a variable. Okay. Now, so let us uh, uh, determine the order quantity the Q systems of inventory control. Now, this item has a very steady demand 
the order quantity is replenished by the supplier with a fixed lead time or instantaneously and the same quantity is demanded in each order cycle. The optimal order quantity to be determined is known as the economic order quantity or EOQ. So, please uh, note uh, this point that uh, many a time uh, we use the term economic order quantity and this term has become very very popular. So, this is also known as the Wilson slot size formula way back in 1913. It was uh, the first time it was introduced by Wilson and that is why it is referred to as the Wilson slot size formula. It is also referred to as the Harris formula because the, the he actually is the person who extensively used this particular as a EOQ uh, the model. So, for the given problem the inventory profile is uh, given below like here Q is the order quantity, B is the reorder point or ROP or reorder level. So, these are the two points. Now, A, B, C, D, E, F these are called lead time that means you have your starting point at time t equals to 0 you start with the order quantity q and then you start consuming it and it is a, is a demand with certainty that means the consumption rate is uniform and uh, then uh, as soon as uh, it reaches the reorder point you place an order at time a and uh, the lead time is known obviously so at uh, at time b you get uh, the replenishment and so immediately in uh, one shot yeah, this from it, it, it from 0 it becomes q again. So, this is one order cycle this is the second first second order cycle. So, this way you repeat ok. So, this is referred to as the order cycle. So, in a year uh, there could be several such order cycles depending on the production rate. Now, this inventory profile is known as the sawtooth curve obviously it looks like uh, the sawtooth. So, let us uh, use certain notations let annual demand is s units order quantity is q number of orders per year is s by q order cost per order is c o inventory carrying cost is i that means as a percentage as a fraction of the total as uh, so average inventory which you hold this point already we have mentioned in the previous lecture sessions and unit price for the given item is c u. So, what you have? So, this is the cost versus order quantity curve. So, you have the total inventory carrying cost per year. So, as the order quantity increases, so the total inventory carrying cost uh, uh, increases, and as the order quantity increases or the order size increases, obviously the total ordering cost per year, okay, uh, the decreases. Is it okay? So, this is and when you add uh, both this cost, so this is the your uh, the cost function or the total cost curve. Okay. So, this please write this one. Now, the total ordering cost per year is C O into S by Q all these formulations are given. Similarly, we have calculated the inventory carrying cost. So, all the steps you have mentioned the total inventory carrying cost per year is I by N into Q by 2 into C uh, C U and the total inventory uh, say inventory co cost per year will be uh, this one inventory carrying cost per year will be this one and the total cost will be the fixed cost plus the variable cost. So, we have all the terms over here. So, please go through uh, all the steps I am sure that uh, uh, you will have the proper understanding and hence uh, we use the term called TC, TC stands for the total variable cost. So, this is S by Q into C O plus I into C U into Q by 2. So, the for minimizations what you need to do you try to determine the order quantity such that that the total cost is held at a minimum level. So, for minimization of the total variable cost necessary condition is uh, the first derivative uh, set to 0 and uh, you have these expressions that is q star root over s c o by i c u and this particular expression is referred to as the economic order quantity. And the obviously, for the sufficient condition for minimization, so I will already aware of that means second derivative with respect to q uh, must be positive. So, it is 2s by q to the power 3 into c o. So, you can prove that this is it remains always positive. So, the total cost curve is a convex function. And so, what are the uh, just uh, before I close, I will just tell you uh, what are the assumptions uh, we have uh, uh, when 
we derived the EOQ for the formula or the Wilson's lot size formula. There are 10 some assumptions, so I will just tell you one by one. So, the first assumption is the lead time is constant or zero, demand is known and uniform, order quantity per order remains constant, you please uh, note them down, unit price is constant, does not change, or whatever may be the order quantity, order cost per order is constant, inventory carrying cost remains constant, it is a single item case, capital constraint is absent. That means, here the capital investment, that means you might say that average inventory which you hold in monetary terms. No limit on the order quantity, it could be any value and no limit on the number of orders. So, these are the 10 uh, the assumptions we have while you formulate the EOQ formula. We will explain uh, all, all these aspects later on in our subsequent lecture sessions. So, uh, so the first lecture session is over. Thank you.